What's up everyone? Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to discuss a new FDA approved medication for the systemic treatment of alopecia areata. And believe me guys, I've been doing research on this new drug and reviewing the two phase three clinical trials and the results are simply magnificent. So who is going to benefit from this drug? What is its mechanism of action? Uh, does it solely regrow hair on the scalp? Or does it work on the eyebrows and eyelashes as well? And finally, what is side effect profile? To answer all these questions, keep watching the video. So, as I mentioned on my first and surprisingly most viewed video on my channel, alopecia areata is an autoimmune condition where the immune cells, the white blood cells, attack the hair follicles. Um, here's the thing we as human beings have something called immune privileges and it's simply defined by a set of conditions where the immune system uh, is suppressed it doesn't work as it usually does in the rest of the body and we have these immune privileges in different sites in our bodies like the testicles for men um, for instance embryos and placenta during pregnancy for women our brain our eyes and most importantly for the subject of this video the hair follicles so, one of the aspects of the pathogenesis of alopecia areata is what scientists call immune privilege collapse, which basically gives the white blood cells free access to attack and kill the hair follicles, which gives us this baldy, patchy appearance. And here comes this new drug, baricitinib. It is a JAK inhibitor. But it's not like other JAK inhibitors, it's a second generation JAK inhibitor, which means it's reversible and selective. And I will explain that in a while. JAK, meaning Janus kinase, is one of the inflammatory signaling pathways in our bodies. And basically what happens is that a cytokine binds to the cytokine receptor on the JAK pathway, uh, exactly on the extracellular part of the JAK pathway. That leads to the activation of the JAK protein through a process known as phosphorylation. JAK then activates another protein called STAT, which by itself, when activated, leads to the inflammatory gene transcription, which basically gives us inflammation. And right about now, you may be thinking, okay, that's great, but is really inhibiting and blocking our immune system a good idea? And the short answer is no, it's a terrible idea. But here's the thing, we don't have just one JAK pathway that's responsible for all the inflammatory responses in our bodies. We have multiple ones. For instance, we have JAK1, JAK2, JAK3, and tyrus kinase 2. Each one of them have a specific implementation and specific orders to fulfill. So baricitinib as a selective JAK inhibitor responsible for only and exclusively inhibiting JAK1 and JAK2 is a good candidate for this mission with keeping a low side effect profile. Now that we answered the first question of the mechanism of action of this drug, let's see who are the group of patients that will benefit from this drug. So baricitinib was FDA approved on the basis of two phase 3 clinical trials called BRAVE AA1 and BRAVE AA2 with 654 and 546 patients respectively. So, subjects or patients were allowed to participate in the study if they had severe alopecia areata with a SALT score of 50 and above. And basically what SALT score is, it's an abbreviation for severity of alopecia areata tool. And it's a score from a 0 to 100, with 0 meaning no hair loss at all, and 100 meaning 100% 100 hair loss on the scalp. Other inclusion criteria involve a current alopecia areata episode with no less than 6 months and no more than 8 years. The primary outcome or the primary goal that basically authors were looking for is a salt score of 20 or less after 36 weeks of getting oral baricitinib. Uh, some other secondary outcomes like eyelash regrowth, eyebrows regrowth, a salt score of 10 or less at 36 weeks and a decrease of 90% of salt score at week 36. 
the subjects in each study were divided into three groups. One group got 2 mg daily of oral baricitinib, one group got 4 mg and one control group got in uh, placebo. And here are the results. The primary outcome on BRAVE AA1 uh, baricitinib 2 mg group got 22.8% and baricitinib 4 mg got 38.8% uh, and on BRAVE AA2 similar results were found as placebo got a primary outcome of 3.3% baricitinib 2 mg group got 19.4% and baricitinib 4 mg got 35.9% and I know numbers can be a little confusing so let me translate these numbers for you what these numbers mean is basically two things the first thing is that the placebo group got significantly less results than the baricitinib 2 groups and what that means is that baricitinib is indeed effective in um, taking away alopecia areata the second remark you should take when looking at these numbers is that uh, the baricitinib 4 mg group in the both studies got nearly uh, twice the results of the baricitinib 2 mg group and that comes to show us that baricitinib is likely a dose dependent drug. Some other key secondary outcomes were written on this table uh, by the authors and we noticed that at 36 weeks of treatment both baricitinib 2 and 4 mg groups in both studies got a significant improvement in uh, hair regrowth on the eyebrows and eyelashes as well and this is a significant point uh, guys because we know that the current treatments for alopecia areata include corticosteroids steroids injections and topicals that could never be applied on the eyelashes for example because the eye is very sensible so baricitinib as an oral drug may be highly effective in these particular circumstances but as uncle ben says with great power comes great responsibility with great power comes great responsibility and you could imagine by yourself the side effect profile from inhibiting your own immune system. But it wasn't that bad as the authors initially thought. One of the side effects that were most frequently reported is acne. And it was reported on 5% of patients on BRAVE AA1. Other side effects included infections, especially urinary tract infections. And one case, only one case of pyelonephritis. Other side effects included an increase of serum LDL and HDL cholesterol and creating phosphokinase uh, enzyme which is basically a muscle enzyme uh, but these side effects were reported in nearly 40% of the subjects. Four cases of neutropenia were reported uh, which basically means a low count of neutrophils. Neutrophils are basically a type of white blood cells that's responsible for the inflammatory and immune response for a bacterial infection. But these cases were really not severe and mild and they returned to normal by themselves and the patients remained on trial. The authors end up saying that the, these two studies were an immense success and that's uh, obvious because they led to the FDA approving this drug, baricitinib. And I want to end up by saying that the current trials are ongoing and are planned to remain randomized and blinded for up to 200 weeks for better results and to establish a better side effect profile. If you made it this far into the video, please make sure to press the like button and share in the comments one subject that you want me to talk about in the future. Stay safe.